Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to another What Just Happened Month. This is a 2021 movie from last year that Disney made. Yes, it's uh, one of those. Uh, it's actually not so bad. It's the crime comedy based on the, the character of Cruella DeVille from Dodie Smith's 1956 novel, The, the 101 Dalmatians. This is uh, directed by Craig Gillespie, Gillespie with the screenplay by Dana Fox and, and Tony McNamara. Etc. Etc. And it's it is a and it serves as a reboot of an origin for the title character played by Emma Stone brilliantly by the way, Cruella. Yeah, this is not a Disney remake. I know some people are gonna say it is. It's not a One Hundred and One Dalmatians remake. This is Cruella's origin story, how she became a fashion you know nista and why she hates dogs etc. I'm not gonna spoil too much if you haven't seen it. It's set in London, yes. I know the place that I dread the most, but at least I can say that these actors are way better than anybody in the rehash trilogy. During the punk rock movement of the 1970s, the film revolves around Estella Miller, an aspiring fashion designer, as she explores a path that will lead her to become a notorious up-and-coming fashion designer known as Cruella DeVille. And there's a lot of good points in this movie. It wasn't garbage. Like, this isn't Beauty and the Beast 2017 where it's the exact same movie, just longer, soulless, no color, and you have an actress that can't sing. This is not a musical, so I appreciate that. There is a lot of music in it, and there's like a performance in the me in the middle of the film. And there's a song at the very end. There's a post credit scene, but I'm not going to spoil much. But there's a lot of good in this. J Gem uh, Emma Stone is brilliant as Cruella amazing like her accent the her demeanor the way that her gorgeous outfits in the movie the the costume designer deserved to win an oscar for the the beautiful outfits in this movie the dresses and the suits and everything it, it really captures that moment in time uh joel fry as uh, as a uh, jasper and uh paul what was his name paul hauser paul hauser uh, walter hauser as as horace they're great their chemistry with 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 uh, Emma Stone is unbelievable. They they act, they remind me of Hermione, uh, Ron, and uh, and uh, Harry Potter in the Harry Potter movies, and the the chemistry is just there. It's flowing. I buy it. I buy their relationship with each other when they're kids, and then when they become adults, it's great. It's just it's some of the it's the best thing in the movie, definitely. Emma Thompson is a complete bitch in this movie as the Baroness. Unbelievable, great actress. She really delivers. She was also in Harry Potter, so so she, you know, she's she's a very versatile actress. Uh, Mark Mark Strong, he's okay. He's not in the film that much. He's not really a villain. Like he mostly gets typecast as a villain. At least he's not in the film that much. Uh, Emily Beecham as Catherine. Yeah, she did fine. She's in the beginning of the film, but then something happens to her. I'm not going to say much. Uh, the two cast members I thought were kind of weak were. Uh, Kirby Howell Baptiste as Anita. <clears throat> she's basically the diversity hire. She has an afro. She's black and British, and not she wasn't horrible. She was not horrible. She just did the best she could. But she's basically there to to set up Anita in the next film, where you know she's gonna work for Cruella, and Cruella's a bitch to her, and she hates her dogs. You know, you you get the gist. The worst actor I thought was um, the guy that played Rogers. He looks nothing like Rogers in the cartoon, or uh, what you might call it. Jeff Daniels was way better in the original, in the uh, remake from '96, because he he plays an American version of Roger and has charisma, and I buy him as Rogers. This guy that played Rogers, I just didn't care for him. He's another diversity hire. <laughs> um, it's um, K Kyvin Novak played as Roger, Roger dearly. A lawyer working for the Baroness who becomes a songwriter after he is fired and suddenly gifting a male dog named Pongo. Yeah, that's in the post credit scene. I'm not going to say much more. Uh, the uh, the openly gay character, he could have been cut. He was only here because Disney has to fill a quota in everything that they do. Uh, John McCree plays Artie, a member of Cruella's entourage and an owner of a vintage fashion shop. He was the first original character in a live-action Disney film to be openly gay. Wrong, sir. They did that with LeFou in the remake of Dis uh, Beauty and the Beast. And the character is inspired by David Bowie and Mark Boland. Yeah, because he looks like Ziggy Stardust. He has a, a star in his eye. He has the makeup and the blonde hair. Yeah, he looks like a young David Bowie. Rest in peace, by the way. Um, but he was not in the film that much. He's not like... I'm going to kiss a guy on... No, they don't do that. This is not freaking uh, uh, Hedwig and, and the Angry Itch. No, it's none of that. Or 
uh, Prince, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. No, I, none of that. It's not the freaking... This is not an LGB movie, just to let you know. He's just a side character. Uh, the dogs. I thought the dogs are cute. Uh, you know, Corella's dog that she has when she's a little girl. Uh, the, the little uh, Chihuahua dog that uh, that uh, Horace has. And, uh, yeah, the film looks great. Like, it's a beautiful-looking film. There's a lot of good shots in the film. The cinematography is really good. It doesn't look like a video game like Avatar 2. So learn from your mistakes, James Cameron. Nobody wants to see a CGI fest for two hours or three hours. They want to see film, not a cutscene from a video game. This movie did have some CG, mainly the, the Dalmatians when they're running and some of the rats and, et cetera, and some of the backgrounds, but it didn't look like shit. And uh, the movie, like I said, it's well. It's mostly well paced. One problem: the film is too long. I think if you cut 10, 15 minutes of the movie and it's under two hours, you got your point across. I think there's some some sound, some some of the soundtrack could have been cut out. The prison break scene, you could have cut the song out. You don't need a song to show what's going on. It just it felt really forced. Uh, some of the side characters could have been cut just for for timing for pacing. Uh, some of the scenes could have been shortened. The fan service from the original film, I think you could have cut that and saved it for the sequel. Just as a precaution, because the movie is two hours and nine minutes. While I hated Eternals for being longer than that, because it did not need to be two hours and 23 minutes, this could have been a little bit shorter, Disney. You don't need to make all your movies two hours. People get it. We get it at an hour and 50 minutes or an hour and 45. Not every MCU movie is two hours even. I mean, uh, the first Doctor Strange was under two hours. The first Thor movie was under two hours. The second Thor movie was under two hours. You can make a movie under two hours. The, the two Ant-Man movies. The movie costs a 100 to $200 million budget. But it the money's on the screen, mostly. It made 233.5. That would be a bomb, but this was during the pandemic. So I give it, I can cut it some slack. This is a lot better than Jungle Cruise. It's not boring and... And idiotic and stupid, and the CGI didn't look like shit. That movie looked was worse. I hated that movie with a passion. And Emily Blunt is is a freaking downgrade compared to someone like Emma Stone who won an Oscar. So suck it, Emily Blunt. And this movie won an Oscar for Galepsi's. It got praise for the performances. Yes, definitely. Galepsi's direction. It looks beautiful. The visual style. This color. It's vibrant. It's lovely, and it looks like the time period. The costume design, the production values, and soundtrack. The screenplay is a bit weak. Some of the jokes re work really well with the three, you know, with Horace Jasper and with Corella. Some of them fall flat. And uh, also, you know, um, like I said, the movie is a bit too long. There's a sequel in development. I'm looking forward to it. Unlike the remakes they made of The Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Lady and the Tramp, and, uh, and and some others, you know, like Maleficent, this is way better. Because unlike in Maleficent, where they try to make her an anti-hero, here, Cruella is the villain. Well, the side villain, you know, really. her uh, The Baroness is the main villain of this movie. I mean, you know, she commits a crime in the beginning of the film, but I'm not going to say too much. But it's a good movie. It's a well-made movie. It, uh, some people are going to disagree with me. I know Josh wasn't crazy about it. But it's not Eternals. I was not bored out of my mind. And the British stuff didn't bother me because I knew what I was getting into. Game of Thrones had to do eight seasons of that. And uh, freaking, you know, uh, every Doctor Who series or freaking Eternals. Those don't know what, they, what they're what they doing for me. They, you know, this knew what it was and, and it went for it. And it's different. It's not beat for beat the same thing. I don't want to see the same thing. I want to see something different. Obi-Wan was different, but I'll get to that some other time. And this movie was the seventh most pirated movie of last year. Of course, because it's actually entertaining. I was laughing my ass off most of the film. And it is dark. This is not a kid's film. Do not let little kids under five watch this. It's dark, and it's more adult than a lot of the other Disney remakes. It's not as whimsical as some people thought it was, but it's good. It's well made. The production's on the screen. It's it's not a, a rehash of something that, that was done better in the day. And I think Emma, Emma Stone does a great job as Cruella she won me over if that was if that was Margot Robbie I would have shut it off if that was Emily Blunt I would have shut it off if that was the hobo I wouldn't even bother watching it at all I would just stay downstairs but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to a sequel it's going to connect more to the first film but as long as you do it right I won't have any complaints about it like I said it is a bit too long and some of the screenplay could have been uh, 
you know, it's, you need one writer, not two. And also some of the soundtrack, just cut it out. You don't, you don't need a song every five minutes, Disney. We get it. It's a period piece. They're trying to do a little bit like Suicide Squad and Guardians, but you don't need a song in every two minutes. You can cut some of the songs out and just put it on the soundtrack or on Spotify or YouTube or whatever. I'll listen to it. But it is well done. It's a good movie. Not a great one, but it's a lot better than a lot of the remakes that have come out. And at least gave me something different. And a darker tone and felt more like a DC movie than a Disney movie. And it didn't have the gay stuff shoved in my face like in other movies that they had to do. Or in anything on the CW, Freeform, or ABC. Just saying, guys. It's not flawless, but it's not horrible either. I've seen way worse than this this year. But I like the film for what it is. Hauser, yeah, when he did... The, he, he's one of the few American actors in the movie, him and Emma Stone. He, he drew inspiration for the role from the performances of Bob Hoskins, May He Rest in Peace, as Mr. Smee and Hook. Yeah, he does sound like that, and he did a good job. He was also good in Black Klansman. And the film, it is what it is. For the, consider this came out during COVID. It could have been a lot freaking worse, guys. I'm being honest. It could have been a lot worse. Like, Jungle Cruise, there was no excuse to make a ride into a freaking two-hour movie that had nothing for me. That wasn't made in every other movie that was, that The Rock did in the jungle. Jumanji. The Jumanji sequels and freaking The Rundown, etc., etc. It's been done better. This at least was something self-contained. It was different. It wasn't, let's make her 101 Dalmatians with the main villain and make her, let's feel sorry for her. I do. But it's not the way you think. It's not like, oh, I, I want her to be a hero. No, she's she's still going to become a villain. It, she's still Cruella. It's not like she lost her essence and became a, but, a bunny rabbit like they did with Maleficent. Maleficent's supposed to be the mistress of all evil and they made her an anti-hero. Why? She so, has freaking horns, for crying out loud. Cruella's human. She doesn't have supernatural powers. She's human. That's what I... Uh, Dan, there were some surprises in the movie I did not expect, especially in the third act. But... It's it's well made. If you have Disney Plus, it's worth at least one watch. It's a recommendation enough. Trust me. There's way worse movies that came out last year. Tom and Jerry, freaking uh, anything on Netflix like 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 freaking Cosmic Sins or Chaos Walking or freaking music. There's way worse movies out there. Look for them. Even 365 Days that just came out this year, the sequel, that's way worse because that's abuse. That there's no story to tell. This at least has a story to tell. But that's my review of Cruella 2021. It's not horrible. I was expecting a lot worse, considering I'm not a fan of Bento's. You've seen my rants on Force Awakens, Rogue One, Solo, and all these other movies where they throw in Bento's for no reason. Here, it fits the time. And it's not perfect, but it's not horrible either. So I give it a thumbs up. At least a thumbs up, because it, it at least entertained me for those two hours. Could have been a lot worse. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next review.